hotspots are the surrounding people that shine so bright. Their light can guide us like guiding stars. My name is Zahra Al Hidri, and we have a bright spot with us today. Her name is Buthaina. She is the second Omani woman to travel to Antarctica. Welcome, Buthaina, and we are happy to have you with us today. How are you, Buthaina? I'm good. Thank you so much, Zahra, for having me, and uh, I'm happy to be here with your nice big smile. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and you look beautiful and bright as well. Thank you. So, Buthaina, what was your trigger to go to Antarctica? My trigger to go to Antarctica is, uh, subhanAllah, it was just a, uh, a presentation that was done by a former colleague. Uh, he was Saudi Arabian. And I just saw these uh, amazing photos of him and I fell in love. Nothing to do with the environment. I just fell in love with the amazing photos and the amazing experience that he had. And uh, I've always wanted to go since then for a couple of years. And then just someone told me, some uh, for the first Omani lady actually, he, she just said, Buthaina, you can do it. And that was, that was the starting point. So usually in Toastmasters, we have mentors who are guiding us. So in your trip, who was that mentor who were guiding you in your trip and who helped you to get to there? It was, uh, I mean, I couldn't say it was one, one person who helped me all the way, but the most supported, supporting person uh, on the trip who has done it before, it was Zina al -Tawiyya. She was the first Omani woman to go to Antarctica, along with the support of the family and uh, our managing director at that, ta at that time. He was Raul Restucci, was so excited also to help me get there. And uh, also I remember another two other di female directors. So I had a lot of female uh, support at that time. Yes. So... so uh, you went there as part of a 2041 campaign. Can you please explain to the listeners what does 2041 mean? So 2041 is the year of the treaty uh, that protects Antarctica from expo exploitation. It is protect, these, this treaty is signed by 50 countries around the world. And uh, yes, and, and, that, and, and 2041 is the year that this treaty is, ends. The expedition that I, I went on and is still going on up to date, that was in the year 2013, and up to date is still going on on a yearly basis, is called 2041, and it raises awareness on the treaty that protects Antarctica. So I remember you told me there is one inspiring guy called Robert Swan. Can you please tell us uh, your experience with him and any special moment that you had with him? Yes, Robert Swan is a special person. He is the leader of our expedition. He takes uh, people from around the world every year, youth from around the world every year, to raise awareness, to give them a message, to help them do something and take this message back home so that it is spread as much as, as possible. The special thing about Robert Swan, he was the first person to go un unattended to cross both poles the north and the south. Uh, and, and he is so special, especially when it comes to Antarctica, because when Robert Swan did that expedition to Antarctica, the first, the first unattended walk, he saw how much litter and how much um, litter that was left behind and how much it was polluting the area. And he, he was able to take around 9,000 tons of waste uh, out of Antarctica for around eight years. Uh, people coming in, in and out to help him, re, you know, um, take out that waste. And that waste was from the whaling at the time where they were uh, whaling um, for, for uh, whale oil. So, uh, so, so he was helping to, to clean up. So he's an amazing person. He also built in the, in the harshest places, the most windiest, the most driest places on earth. He was able to build a sustainable uh, place uh, okay. fully, fully sustainable and using fully sustainable energy in the most harshest place. No matter how long or how many times I listen to your speech, you inspire me more and more and more. So 
many people are saying that global warming is just something that people like to make a lot of drama about. So is it really happening? What can you tell to uh, our listeners? It's all around you, people. I mean, global climate is something. It's happening. It's changing. And you can talk to the people around you. You can talk to your grand. Uh, grandparents or the people who have lived here uh, as long as three to four to five generations and you will and they will tell you how the weather is changing not only because the weather is changing but things are changing on in a way that is uh, destroying a lot of planets on earth a lot of creatures um, uh, the cycles instinct animals um, weather like I mean I can say at least me coming from the Sultanate of Oman we have had a lot of uh, weather changes when it came to cyclones to things that we I mean uh, our ancestors did not see so now if you look at the news now you will see that there are many floods and many uh, weather disasters around the world happening at the same time and uh, scientists have also proven that you can go and read about it in the internet and uh, you can even open youtube and just listen and you will and you will see how science can tell you that things are changing on this planet so how can we stop global warming what can we do as individuals because many people are saying that i'm just uh, one person even if i uh, do one thing it will not affect anything First of all, initially, everybody needs to take responsibility of, of, uh, of this earth because we share it. All of us share it, right? And uh, if we don't take responsibility of earth altogether and share um, taking care of it, who will? Uh, we cannot depend on the, on the generations after us because the ancestors, they depended on us and look at, at, how, at where we reached right now. So I can say that not only spreading the word matters, because spreading the word does matter when you go back uh, after this video, go and talk to, to the people around you and spread the word, word, because that's very powerful. Not only that, it's as simple as little small steps as you can. Do whatever you can, smallest things, like um, not using disposable items, disposable plastic bags, disposable uh, bottles, uh, walk as much as you can, um, replace whatever is harmful um, to, to the earth and with something that is better. And look at how much the industry is changing in, 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 this, in this area. You will be surprised every time you go, it will tell you this item is either recyclable, uh, this is biodegradable. I mean, it's so easy and simple. It doesn't have to be that complicated. Uh, it's as easy as replacing your water bottle at home. Uh, these simple, simple things will make a difference because one person, two plus three plus four equals everybody else, right? I remember in the presentations that you are presenting, I saw a picture of you jumping in, a freeze, in the freezing water. And until today, I'm thinking, how can Buthayna try to do this. So can you tell us about your experience? Yes, I'll tell you. So, well, actually, it's going to become, it's going to be a long story <laughs> because I'm going to start from the beginning. I'm not okay. a camper. I don't like to um, jump, you know, go camping. I mean, actually, in fact, the first camping trip <laughs> was on Antarctica. It was the first wow. camping experience. I know. Uh, it's crazy. <laughs> At that time, uh, I used to swim when I was a little girl, and then I stopped swimming for a long time, and I, I didn't swim. So at that time, I don't think I was able to swim. But uh, if I have, I have gone a long way to go to Antarctica. Actually, I waited for a couple of years until I had the guts for, for <laughs> Zina to tell me, Buthena, you can go. And then I went after a couple of years just thinking about it all the time, dream, dreaming about it, looking into documentaries, into videos, it just... My heart was taken by those, by those <laughs> pictures, but it took me at two years. And on top of these two years, sponsorship, because it was an expensive trip, and getting all the people around me on board and understanding how bad I wanted to go. It took me a lot of effort, a lot of guts, and a lot of bravery. So for me to go all the way from Oman to Antarctica for the first time... Um, I'm going to do whatever it takes. So the whole experience, I have to change it. So part of this uh, expedition was to do the polar 
polar plunge. And that is to dip yourself in the ocean uh, in minus degrees where it was snowing, where I've never seen snow before in my life, real snow, not the one in the Emirates Mall. Yes. <laughs> I'm not, I'm a desert person. I've lived in Oman uh, almost my entire life. And part of my life was also living in, in Asia, but those were tropical hot climates. So for me to go all the way there, I had to experience the whole thing. Um, it was freezing cold. I said, I'm going to do it. Even if it was, even if I didn't know how to swim, It took me all that effort. I have to, I, I don't want to regret anything. So I remember. <laughs> <laughs> and as a hijabi, it was also a challenge. I wasn't sure if I was confident enough, but I wanted to try it. Indeed. So, yes. yeah, I mean, we had a lot of other ladies that you would think that they would be brave enough to do it and they, and they could swim, but they didn't. And imagine that we, us, the ladies that were not so that were not swimmers we encouraged yes. them to do it <laughs> mashallah yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. you are so so brave it took you two years to go to there actually for me i think it will take forever <laughs> to take that decision and go there you are so brave and actually you are a role model for all omani ladies and all omanis so tell us how did you feel when you were raising the omani flag there how did you feel I couldn't believe it. It was like a dream. I, I didn't, I mean, even me uh, planning the whole steps one by one and uh, with the help of others, I mean, encouraging me behind the scenes, yes. I just didn't believe that this day would come. Uh, I remember the first time we, we, uh, we landed our feet on, uh, on the ship. And uh, the noise uh, of em embarkation of the uh, embarking the ship to to go, so the whistle. I remember, uh, you know, the 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 feeling in my stomach, like I was going to be sick. <laughs> it was, it was. Ex I was extremely excited, and for me to step on um, uh, on the mountain in Antarctica and hold my country's flag. It was the most proudest moment ever. I was so proud that I was able to reach uh, to that point. Wow, amazing. And I hope by this uh, podcast and interview, we are going to inspire more and more ladies to go there or even to reach their dreams. So um, who were the people there? Who were the people with you from which countries? So we had people from over uh, 28 countries. So 180 people from 28 countries. So sure. everywhere from different ages, from different religions, from different backgrounds, from different cultures. But the spirit was one and the positivity in that ship was amazing. Um, I learned a lot of things. I still connect with many of these people. We each have each other's accounts on Facebook and Instagram to inspire each other and keep the momentum going. So from different, from everywhere. I mean, you could say China, the Gulf, we had four countries, um, Australia, the United States, Britain, um, Sri Lanka, India. Um, I, I don't remember all the countries off by heart, but uh, people came in New Zealand from all different places of the world. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. So I can see the energy. Whenever you say, uh, you tell this message, I can see the energy and it comes and as you are fueling yourself with more and more energy. So from that whole spectacular trip, what is that one message that you have to all of us? Um, actually, don't never ever fear of, of, uh, of going, doing your dreams. Never fear it. Because fear is the only thing that will hold you back. I had to wait a couple of years because I, have, I was afraid to, to step my, my foot in, in, you know, to start even thinking about it. And the second thing is that uh, treat the planet as if it was your home. It is your home. Treat the planet as if it was your house. You want everything in your house to stay as clean, as, um, as good as it is. You are always protecting it. You are always cleaning it. You are always mending it. You are always trying to fix it. Treat the planet as if it was your house. And, and, and inshallah, we'll get to a place where um, 
well, the world will be cleaner than it, than it is right now. Thank you. Thank you, Buthaina. And uh, I am very proud to know you and I am very Thank proud you, to interview, interview you. you. And uh, I'm pleased to have you today with us. And uh, I always feel proud to have a friend like you. So we would like to thank you as uh, from District 105. We would like to thank you for all your time, all the inspiration. And we would like to have you more and more with us. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much.